Hi there, my name is Kate and I usually go by Artemistic on YouTube and um, like when I do any kind of gaming and for my music production. Um, so I'll be posting under Artemistic for this channel, but my name is Kate. This is a very new format for me. I've not ever uh, recorded a video like this where I'm reviewing a product or talking about my personal life. Um, if you've seen any of my other YouTube videos, you can see it's mostly music videos and um, some speed paintings. And um, I don't have a lot on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching this, thank you for coming to my channel and taking a look at what I've got. Um, a lot of my other videos are a bit older and I've not recorded anything in a while. So, you know, time times change and so do I. And so I'm always kind of coming up with new and different things to record. So um, I decided to start a new YouTube series on my channel and it's inspired by this new um, color watercoloring book that I came across. Um, I, I watch a lot of reviews, paint reviews, and speed paintings, and watercolor painting tutorials on YouTube, and I found it to be extremely helpful and inspiring. And so I've just been, you know, very inspired by what I've been seeing and um, I'm ready to try a new project. So I came across these Prima uh, watercolor confections paints and um, I got the Tropicals um, set and then this watercolor coloring book. It's in 8 by 10 inch um, coloring book full of watercolor paper images um, that you can fill in in color. So it's kind of along this the whole, um, I guess you could say it's a trend of adult coloring books. Um, I've gotten a few of those and um, I experience a lot of hand pain and holding colored pencils and having the pressure or even with pens I'm really limited in what I can actually do. So I end up not really doing much in them and they kind of sit there empty. I've tried painting in some and that is possible, but the paint kind of soaks through the paper because it's not intended for watercolor. So when I saw this, I just thought it looked so cool. You know, I, um, I first saw it, I'll give a shout out right now to Lindsay uh, with The Frugal Crafter. She is a YouTuber that I subscribe to and I love her videos. She's uh, such a, a positive force of creativity and she really encourages me to find ways to be more creative um, and fi figuring out ways to uh, do different styles of painting, to try some new products that I haven't thought of trying before, um, and to just kind of try to have fun with it. So I saw recently she did a review on, I think it was Jane Davenport um, paint, the, the paint, paint set. Um, and then in it, she showed a painting that she had done comparing it, and then she was comparing throughout the review with these Prima watercolor confections. And that led me to watching a lot of other reviews because I loved the vibrancy of it for the price point that you can uh, get these at. Um, and then she was showing this watercolor coloring book. It led me to search through her things and found a review on these things. Um, and she went through and showed all of these different um, pages in the watercoloring book and I felt very inspired by them. They're all very positive messages so I'll just kind of quickly, well I know this one will be 
<laughs> they're not out of the book and I'm doing this upside down well I don't this is my first time recording like this okay <laughs> I'll work on this as I go through it um, anyway there are a lot of very inspirational messages that I want to be looking at and I'd like to be able to try and paint um, um, another quick, I'll try to make this quick in the moment, um, thing about me. As you can see, I've got braces on both arms. I'm experiencing carpal tunnel right now with quite a lot of pain um, and limitation in um, as far as capability. Um, it's been going on for quite a few months and I've not been able to paint. and. You know, part of my hope in doing this series is to talk to other people that may be experiencing the same thing, where you feel so limited by what you're able to do and not do. Um, I want to be able to paint, um, and I can't paint the way I normally do because I take a lot of time painting. Uh, so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to go ahead and pull this first one out. The plan is to do the entire um, book. Oh, well, now see, I'm even having a hard time getting it out of the book. So if they're pretty firmly actually glued in here. So I'm just going to try to carefully pull that out. We're going to start with the first one in the book and work our way through. And the first one says, say hello to adventure. And I thought that was so fitting for what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to step outside of my limitations and find a way to create again. It's such a necessary part I know in my life um, for mental well-being and um, you know, I've been experiencing a great deal of chronic pain and it's not being managed well. And I end up just not doing anything creative. And so I want to change my expectations of what I'm capable of doing and really kind of um, step back a little bit and try doing things a little bit different way. So I've got, oh, here it is here. Um, I like to paint onto uh, like a cardboard backing. This is just the back of uh, Canson XL, uh, one of these, <laughs> one of these books here, Canson XL watercolor, um, watercolor paper. That's what I usually typically use for painting and the back of them just has this really nice hard thick cardboard um, backing. So. I'm going to just put my picture onto that and then I'll secure it with just a little masking tape. Now, when I was creating things for professional purpose, if you want to call it that, um, items to sell, I would paint around the entire or, uh, tape around the entire edge to make sure it stays down really flat and gets that nice crisp uh, white border on the edging but today and for this purpose I'll probably end up framing these in a small um, just an 8 by 10 frame and so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it just enough to hold it down onto a flat surface so I just put a little masking tape around the edges now my uh, video camera will only record in 10 minute segments so I'll try to edit this out smoothly but for now uh, I just have to stop and re-record uh, for each of those. So before we get on to doing painting, first I would like to look at these watercolor confections a little bit more. So I ordered these from Amazon, the watercolor confections tropical set. I think I got them for $20.13, which to me is a really good deal for a decent set of watercolor um, 
paints. I'm not sure what to really expect out of them. I've watched a lot of reviews. I haven't tested them out yet. Um, as far as like um, whether they're artist quality or not, I know people have been questioning that. And I don't know. Um, if you want to consider me a professional artist, I, I guess technically I could be because I have made art for sale. I've sold quite a few um, small paintings and um, cards that I've painted. And I normally use Holbein. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It could be Holbein, but I think it's Holbein um, watercolor tubes. I usually use and I've got I just uh, put them out into a palette which is a mess <laughs> as watercolor palettes can get to be but I just squeeze some of the tube into this palette and use it um, like that and I'm very happy with my Holbein paints I really enjoy them a lot and then I also use quite a lot these Dr. P.H. Martins, um, the liquid watercolor concentrates, uh, they actually work amazingly well for vibrancy, for getting um, really deep, rich color really quickly, really easily. So I use those quite a lot. Um, I found them to make excellent galaxies and cosmos. Um, paintings which are what I normally gravitate towards doing. Um, so am I a professional artist? I guess that all depends on what exactly you consider to be professional but um, I have made art for for sale and it has sold um, but like I said I've not been able to be painting in quite a while now and so I'm changing my expectations as far as I'm not trying to create anything to sell right now. Right now, I am purely going to try to paint for my own personal pleasure and enjoyment um, to try to find something to help deal with chronic pain. So, um, on that note, let's go ahead and open this up. I did open them earlier. Um, I just got them last night from Amazon and um, I opened them to take a look and because I had seen that they were wrapped very securely in these little plastic wrappers and I knew I wouldn't be able to fiddle with that on camera very well. So um, when you open it, it's this really great little tin that has a uh, couple mixing wells and some areas so you can just do some mixing and this part also comes out and there's even more down underneath there so that's pretty great feature I think um, I left one in the packaging so you could see what I was doing with them it's hard with my hands to do this it took me quite a while earlier to get that them all unwrapped as you can see here I'll just show you here um, it says watercolor confections artist quality watercolor pan sets um, this is the last one in this set I just didn't unwrap yet so you can see how I've done it um, I noticed on a lot of the reviews the paint sliding and slipping around and just like being difficult to paint with um, let me get this open. But then I was watching Lindsay did a little, um, the frugal crafter. She did a little uh, thing about what you can do to minimize that. And I thought I'd just put it on here too. On this section here that holds the pans, it's got these little um, metal edges. They're very easy to just slightly push in and you just push it in a little bit. And then what you do is you take your pan and you kind of put it towards the middle and then kind of uh, pop it down underneath that lip of that metal thing. And that keeps them from sliding around all over the place. 
So I thought that was a really easy, quick way to sort of secure these pans so you're not messing around with them rattling around while you're trying to paint. So we've got that great little pan set there and it came with a card that you can do um, your swatches on and it doesn't it's not watercolor paper I'm not sure what exactly their paper is here but it's definitely not watercolor paper so what I did is I just made another card that I can just do the same thing with. And I thought, let's do both. And we'll try them both out and see what we get. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get my brush wet. And these, I'll show you my brushes too. I've been using these, I saw them also on the Frugal Crafter uh, review that Lindsay had done, um, talking about these Royal uh, Aqualon brushes. They have been great. They are very affordable. They, um, they're very durable. I like the acrylic handles because, you know, on some other types of brushes, if you're not careful with them and you let them sit too long in the water, the handles swell and they split and they crack because it's a wooden handle. And, you know, this is just a little bit less fussy. I guess you could say and I like the brushes and how they distribute paint so I mostly use those Royal Aqualons. Okay so um, what I'm going to do is first we'll just put a little drop of water on each pan to sort of activate and I'm not I'm trying not to um, pick up any color yet because I just want to get, this is how I like to do it, to activate a pan. I just kind of put a drop or two in it. I can, I'll use a spray bottle sometimes, but I'm not sure how much I want to get um, this metal tin all wet like in the hinges and everything. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to put a little water in each pan. Oh, sorry about that timer there. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll just start getting those activated and then I'm going to have, I normally have paper towels handy. Um, what I have today though, I'm out of paper towels so I grabbed some napkins and I thought I'd show you guys this one. I thought this was uh, pretty funny, these napkins I found. They have different sayings on them but this one says, tell me about your day and what made it okay. Well, for me today, what's making it okay is trying to do this paint review and get myself painting again. So, um, that is what I'm doing today to make the day okay. So, let's see, I'm looking for, well, I'll just use the back of this Canson watercolor look. This is my painting table and I don't really care if I get paint on it, but I'm just going to set it up on this so that I'm not going to run over and get paint onto the table. So I am going to do it first on the, um, oh well now see this picks up paint very quickly. That one drop of water on there is really getting a nice well of wet paint. So I'm just going to just kind of fill it in and see what I get and then I'm going to just take that I had too much water on the brush for that and take it over to the watercolor paper see you can already tell that um, yes I am having trouble with handling the brush I do not have the control that I used to have and I experience a lot of pain with all of this. So I feel very limited in my painting ability right now, but I love painting and I miss painting. So I'm just going to do my best 
and like I said change my expectations of what I can do and not try to be painting anything um, for sale but just for my own personal enjoyment you know um, that's part of what I am wanting to talk about in this YouTube series um, I don't usually talk about well I've never talked on a YouTube video before but I don't usually talk to others about my chronic pain issues much because I kind of stick to myself and I don't really communicate about that with other people um, it's not something that people necessarily want to talk about you know and I've dealt with a lot of illness and a lot of chronic health concerns and the reality is even if people don't want to talk about it it's a real issue for uh, for a lot of us and I'd like to just be honest about that that you know what some days a lot of days I just feel really sick and I'm in a lot of pain and I can't just do everything that I want to be doing and that's very difficult it gets to be very challenging to enjoy things because you're always hurting and um, sometimes there aren't just easy answers or quick fixes for any of that so I'm trying to figure out how to try to enjoy the things that I used to really enjoy with sort of a new definition of what that even is so anyway about these colors so far boy I am loving the vibrancy and they are going on very smoothly and the way I do these I usually try to put a little bit heavier color in the top left corner I'm not doing these um, as well as I could be doing but I'm feeling pleased with the results so far and seeing all of these different lovely colors well that's a little wet there that I'm able to achieve boy that's just like a beautiful Viridian sort of a tint um, none of these colors actually have like the pigment number on them and I've heard other people talking about that you know we question what they're made of how they're produced and there's I think I haven't been able to find there's not really much information about them and what the paints are actually made out of but I will say I believe so far they seem to be applying very well onto the paper I'm just doing a wet onto dry application um, and then maybe on a scrap page we'll do a couple uh, wet and wet and see how those turn out but so far I just am loving the vibrancy of these paints I do a lot of oh look at that I had too much on the brush but boy that is just a gorgeous purple I have not, in any of the paints that I've tried, found a purple that deep and vibrant in that nice, cool, sort of a purple tone yet. And that is lovely. I can see myself using that for a lot of different applications. So let's see, we're almost done here. I know this first video is probably going to be kind of long and I'm going to try to um, edit down future videos to not be quite so long. I know it's kind of a slow start. I hope you'll stick with me um, and realize this is my first time with this format. And 
you know, I've got a lot that I'm thinking about and trying to remember to, um, to share. And if I get lost along the way, forgive me, please, and try to hang in there and let's see what we can learn together about painting and about trying to deal with chronic pain and finding ways to continue doing things when you feel very limited and you're not able to do all the things that you used to be able to do. And then I'm hoping, I'll find out after I've recorded everything, that my music isn't too loud and competing too much with my voice and that you'll be able to hear everything okay. I live in a neighborhood with a lot of vehicle traffic and we've got someone around here with a motorcycle that just loves going up and down the road and uh, revving that engine as he goes flying past. And so I'm hoping to kind of block out some of that um, vehicle noise with having my music on. Plus, I always listen to music when I paint. I, I listen to music a lot. Uh, for me, music is therapy. And um, I need that therapeutic effect that I get from music, from art, from crafting. Um, it's always been what I use and what I do to kind of help manage these difficult things in life. I definitely got too much paint on the brush on some of these, but I am just loving the vibrant, I'm going to spread this one out a little bit more because I really got a lot there. These colors are so rich and they look like they are going to just make some beautiful paintings. So what I'm going to do, I had another piece of paper scrap here. I'm just going to do something really basic and simple here. I'm wetting this across here. And then I'm just going to drop in a few colors. I'm not trying to design anything or make anything. I'm just going to drop in a few colors and see what the flow is on wet and wet. I love that color. Well, see, I'm liking this a lot. I'm, I've read or seen on YouTube videos some people saying it doesn't flow well, it won't blend well, um, but in my opinion, that is flowing beautifully. I'll lift it up a little more in case it's not showing well. To me, that is just lovely. You can see all the patterning streaking out there. Um, before this dries, I'm kind of <laughs> being slow. I'll just add a little bit more water in here. I'm going to add some of this uh, nice vibrant yellow here and kind of try to mix into that green viridian and see what I get with that. And I'm very happy with what this paint is doing so far for blending. You know, I love doing Northern Lights, Cosmos, Galactic, Universal, you know, whatever you want to call it, Aurora Borealis. Those are the paintings that I gravita gravitate towards doing because I love watching the colors flow into one another and just um, being able to try to replicate those beautiful images that just kind of reach down in deep. I, I love seeing these things. The northern lights. I lived in Alaska and that's something I will never forget. Living in Alaska and viewing the northern lights, especially when I could get out by myself and just kind of get away from it all and have the northern lights there with me. Now I will say this, 
I mixed my that beautiful deep purple into that viridian color because that's how I usually make um, a lot of the time I'll make darks that way like a nice deep purple and a viridian make a really great dark in watercolor and I can see already just from that one little line into that viridian it's going to make an excellent dark so this is just really quickly to show you how the colors are flowing into each other and personally I'm very pleased with that. So our swatches are still drying, overlapping a little bit there, but I will hold them up side by side so you can see a comparison of the paper that they put in the box and actual watercolor paper and you can see a little bit of a difference in application and how the color sort of um, flowed and set onto the page but in my mind it looks great on both of them so we've tested out those paints and we're going to test them out even more now by actually finally getting to our water coloring book. Let me move these things out of the way. So, in the past, I have done some paintings on my YouTube channel. They're not indicative of everything I'm capable of doing. Um, those are some of my earlier paintings and still just trying to learn how to mix colors and honestly I think I'll still be doing that for as long as I'm alive. <laughs> trying to learn how to mix colors and what to do with all of them. Um, so for today I think all I want to do is get color on this page. And, you know, like I said, I just love that deep sort of viridian tone and that really deep purple. And those are my favorite colors in general. So um, I'm going to try to go with working with some of those. I need to get some more water here. And I've got to think this through. Do I do the lettering first or the background? I think I will try to work around that lettering. See, this is going to be the tricky part. With how my hands are, trying to get in those small letters might be a little bit tricky. Here's what I'm going to do. Hey, let me back this up. I think what I will do is use my number eight round brush, my Royal Aqualon round brush. And I think what I'll do is do the lettering first, actually. And I'm going to do the method where you fill in with water first and then you just drop colors in. So I'm going to try to drop in purple on this end. And kind of bring it around. And then I've got all these different buckets of water around here. And then I'm going to use that nice, deep, beautiful viridian for this edge and just kind of allow the, oh, see, I got out of the lines. Normally that would drive me insane and it, oh, <laughs> I did it even more. It still kind of does. See, and that's, I over messed with it. Got too much water and then over messed with it. Okay, well, guess what? I'm not making this to sell. I'm making this for me, and that's all that really matters. I think what I will do, though, is go down a size on my brush. Oh, where is my six? Oh. Um, I'm not finding the six I want to use, so I'm going to go for a five, even though that's kind of small. This lettering is small, 
so why not? So I'm just going to get it wet inside the lettering. My plan is to get these all made and hang them up in my dining room, over the dining room table. My daughter and I, I, I have a nine-year-old daughter, she and I do a lot of art projects together and we usually end up hanging them up on that wall and it's kind of um, evolved into spreading out all around the house actually and we will fill that completely up and then when we're kind of tired of seeing the same things over and over we just kind of start um, we'll move them into the hallway and then come up with some new um, new art to put it over the dining room table and fill that up and then spread those out into um, the kitchen and you know we've got it all kind of spreading out everywhere our house has turned into basically an art gallery of my daughter and I's um, art that we've either done separately or together to me I love that having my house full of our art um, especially on the really hard days you know some days you just feel like you can't do anything and it really works on your mind and you're like if you're anything like me you end up feeling like you're just never going to be able to do anything that you want to be able to do and I have to try to remind myself you know what? I can do it. Some days are better than others. And so I try to just get myself to appreciate the things I've done in the past and try to find new ways to do things moving forward. So, you know, normally I could have this lettering done so quickly and very legibly done, you know, I can be very much a perfectionist when it comes to my artwork, which in some ways is a great thing. As an artist, you're able to really work hard to achieve the results that you want. In other ways, it just kind of limits you because you're so hard on yourself about getting it just so and just right, you know. So hopefully these larger letters are a little bit easier to get. And I'm going to not, I'm going to try to not worry about it going out of the lines because I'm not going to totally fill this in. I think I might just go kind of around the edges. So, and you know, I'm not making it for sale, I'm just making it for my daughter and I to enjoy. Oop. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm going to keep reminding myself of that. What I'm hoping in doing this series is that maybe some other people out there are like me. and. They need some encouraging too. I, I've been getting very down lately um, about my health and you know that really wears on you and gets to you and it makes it all worse. And I end up feeling really quite isolated and alone in my health problems because I'm not able to get out much and see what other people are experiencing and my world can become very very small and it's mostly just kind of existing from day to day and you know that gets very hard on anyone and you know my world mostly is comprised of spending time with my daughter and really just trying to um, make the best of it with what I'm capable of doing, which a lot of the time is not a whole lot. And 
that can be incredibly discouraging. And so I'm hoping by doing this video series, it'll keep me actually trying to keep doing things and trying to keep finding ways to manage better and ways to enjoy life even if it's not everything that you wish it could be to try to find ways to appreciate what it is and for me creating art making music um, crafting of any kind has always been my way of dealing and managing with all of these um, health challenges. You know, I've been dealing with issues for really over 20 years um, in varying degrees and, and types and um, art and creativity, music have always been what kind of helps me feel free when you can feel kind of trapped in a body that doesn't function the way you wish it could or a mind even that doesn't function the way you could. Um, I'm not normally open and honest about a lot of my health with other people because I don't interact much with other people because of all of it, but um, I do have PTSD and I am bipolar and um, these things significantly impact your quality of life and I have some autoimmune disease issues and other health concerns that aren't even really figured out yet so you know it all kind of plays on your mind and where is he down? And I've always turned to making music. I I used to play the guitar a lot. I haven't much in a while. I used to play the piano significantly when I was younger. I had a few things happen that kind of slowed down my piano playing um, ability. And I wound up started playing a keyboard and you know I go through time periods where it's like all I can think about is making music, recording music, playing um, my piano or my guitar you know and then other times I'll go very long periods not actually doing much of any of it and I will say that depression is probably a really key um, component in that so, um, well, you know what, I'm going to dab that edge off because I really went overboard on that tea. You can always just use a piece of paper toweling or napkin to dry off a section that you weren't happy with. Here's another one of those napkins that I thought was really funny. What did you do to change the world today? I changed my socks. That counts. <laughs> I thought that was a silly napkin. Um, anyway, I just, I'm going to use that to kind of blot that up and try this again. I, I am definitely feeling it in my hands, feeling, um, trying to do this lettering is not so simple when you've got carpal tunnel and are experiencing a lot of pain, trying to do these more detailed, fine areas, smaller sections, you know, and not just like a big color wash. But you know what, I'm going to be very pleased, I think, with the results, and so it will be worth it. And I'm going to feel much happier at the end of today knowing I did this, and just having another day of feeling discouraged about all of it. Anyway, okay, so music, I was talking about playing my piano and switching to a keyboard. Um, and then last year, 
after about 25 years of thinking about one and wanting one and loving them, I finally figured out a way to get myself a harp. I just love a harp and love harp music. To me, it feels so healing and soothing, calming, um, energizing at the same time. To me, it's almost like a magical healing source. And so I thought, wow, you know, I would love, love to have my own harp and to be able to play it for myself. And, um, and then, you know, I've heard of harp therapy and um, I felt like that could be a very beneficial tool for me. And oh, I love it. I love my harp. I, I found a harp for a really good deal. It's a lap harp, 26 strings. And, um, you know, it's just kind of a nice beginner's harp. It's, um, it's a harpsicle harp. It does not have levers, tuning levers that you can use to switch, um, switch your key, but I've learned a lot about tuning a harp and changing my tuning so that I can achieve the, um, the keys and the tones that I'm wanting to achieve. I've made a lot of progress and really enjoyed every second of playing on my harp. I just, oh, I love it. And it makes my heart feel so good when I can play on my harp. And so I know that that's going to be another one of my passions in life. And right now I've not been able to play my harp since last October. We're in February now or my piano and boy that just is tough on your mind when that's what you do um, to try to kind of work through life so you know it is what it is and I keep reminding myself I will play again I will make music I will play my harp I will play my piano well, my keyboard anyway. And I will be able to do all of those things again, just not today. And I'm going to try to figure out how to make that okay. And I'm hoping that in talking about all of this, with whoever might come across this video, which I don't assume there will be very many people, <laughs> I don't have a lot of views on my channel, I'm not socially active so it's not like I'll be sharing this and spreading it around everywhere um, but if you come across this because you're either looking for information about painting about these Prima paints um, or if you happen to come across it because I will put um, tags in it about or keywords about chronic pain management art therapy um, things of that nature too. If you're coming across this for that, my hope is that it can be an encouragement for anyone else that's struggling like me to be able to do the things that they want to be able to do that are feeling limited by their health, whether it's physical or mental, both, all of it, they're all combined, I think, you know, that maybe we can work together to try and find our way through some of this darkness that we can get into. Um, try to shine a little light, I guess, on some of these um, really difficult situations we can end up feeling like we're in and that we are in. I know, like I said, this is going to be a long video for my first video. and. You might not want to sit through all of it. If you do, thank you. Thank you for listening, and I hope that somehow it can help. Just to know that there is someone else out there. There's someone out there that is experiencing a lot of the same things 
and we kind of get isolated and um, can end up feeling like sometimes we're the only ones. And I'm hoping by doing this either, you know, people will start commenting if they watch or even just like click the like button or subscribe to see the rest of the uh, paintings that I end up doing. Um, just to share that encouragement that we're not alone and we can expand our world. We can do more and we don't have to just be trapped. Even if our bodies make us feel trapped or sometimes our mind, we don't have to be trapped and that's what I want to find and what I want to share. I've been working really hard for years now to find ways to expand my horizons and to sort of open myself up to learning more ways of coping and managing and enjoying life. Sometimes it doesn't feel very enjoyable when you're in chronic, when you're experiencing chronic pain. It's kind of tough to enjoy doing anything. You get so worn down by it. And I've always managed really pretty well because I have my art and my creativity. And, you know, last year I, I had a business on Etsy. I was doing markets, craft fairs, shows around the area where I live. I did a really great spring craft show last March that was just amazing. What a great experience. I loved it. You know, I was doing a little bit better at the time. I was more energetic. I was experiencing less pain. And overall, I was capable of doing it at the time. Um, then after a few months, I think I got into June or July, it all of a sudden shifted. You know, I have illness that kind of tends to flare up. Um, it'll be, I can be, I've had a few times where I'm doing pretty good and I'm okay and then other times where I'm not okay at all and I wind up in very severely um, poor health status. And I went from being pretty energetic and doing okay and able to make all these great things and create all sorts of wonderful um, art projects. I was constantly making things, making jewelry, making paintings, um, sewing things, crocheting, I mean, you name it. I do it. Um, I just love doing all those things and I was doing that for for these craft shows, for the markets, um, for my Etsy shop um, and then all of a sudden it went to the last couple markets I did. I wound up barely able to set them up and be there and by the end of the day, when I would get all my stuff broken down and put back at the house, by the time I got home and got it all put away, I really felt useless for the rest of the week. And trying to get enough energy to get it back up together and get everything unloaded, unpacked, set up, you know, I had to have the canopy, which has all these heavy sandbags and um, tables and chairs and um, all of the decor and all of the merchandise. And it's basically like setting up a store and taking it down every day. Like, <laughs> you have to build your whole store in, in one day, you know, <laughs> and take it down and do all of your selling that you can do in that day. I loved the experience of the market. I loved the people that were there that I was um, interacting with. I loved getting out and being a part of an artistic community. I loved all of that. Let me interject to say this is making my hand cramp 
a lot. But I'm gonna just try to relax my grip. I'm almost done with the lettering here. And I'm gonna try to just go even more loosely in there. And I'd be okay with that. Anyway, the markets were wonderful and what a beautiful experience. But with my health, it was not sustainable. Oh boy, I let that dry too much down there. So this last one, I'm kind of getting a little bit of, um, I'll just drop a little more water in there. Dry painting technique there. All right, I'm gonna say that's good enough for the lettering. So then, let's see. Anyway, um, so I'm not doing the markets anymore and I wound up getting very depressed that I couldn't keep doing that. I couldn't keep making the merchandise. I couldn't keep up with my Etsy shop online and all of it just kind of felt like it kind of collapsed on me a little bit, you know? Which is not what I wanted. I wanted something that I could stick with and do forever. Well, when you have health concerns like mine and like I'm sure a lot of you do, that doesn't work. It just doesn't. So, um, if you noticed, I got into a different green that I'm filling in. I'm just going to fill in these sections. And then I'm going to drop in, it's even brighter than I thought because I just don't have a lot of paint in this section. These are very small sections on this, on these little mountains. And of course it's driving me nuts that I am not staying around the lines and yeah, see I just didn't have enough paint in that and that it's kind of, in my mind, I would think it's messy or sloppy. I'm gonna try to figure out how to be okay with that and to just enjoy that, hey, guess what? I'm painting. I am painting. I haven't been painting since October. And here we are, February. Normally for Christmas, I make everyone homemade gifts. I craft things, I paint, I sew, I do all of that, you know, make people jewelry, those sort of things for the people I love and care about because, you know, of course my health has also affected my financial resources intensely. And so I have learned how to make homemade gifts for people and it just kind of, um, changed my expectations of what I can give and this last year for Christmas boy I just couldn't do anything it was pretty depressing you know but I know my family knows that I love them and I care about them and if I could I would have been doing all kinds of things so for this one I'm going to um, I just put that nice bright green into the mountain I'm gonna dip into this yellow a bit here and just kind of drop in a little and see what what I get with that effect just to kind of add a variance in what I'm getting well you know that's one thing about pans I am um, I don't like mixing the colors in together on the pan see I got that one little dot of green I'm already going to just dab that little guy out because when I want yellow pigment, I want yellow pigment. <laughs> so anyway, okay then. I got my lettering done and my little mountains filled in there. I think what I'd like to do now is just a very simple color wash around the edges and I'm just going to keep it nice and loose because my hands are pretty much done for now. So I'm gonna get it nice and wet with a nice clear water. I've got all these different little buckets of water around here. Um, let's see, I would like to do, 
Um, I should have thought of this beforehand. What color do I want? You know what? I love this. Well, I'm going to get my, um, where's my number 10? My number 10 round to drop the color in with so I can just put fresh water down. And I'm just going to drop some in like that. And then, let's see. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. I, I'll be kind of uh, learning as I go and getting a little better at my camera skills on this and going to try to uh, shorten my time down. I know this is a really long video and hey, a lot of us are, we're really busy. We've got life going on, right? <laughs> well, some of us though, we're sick and we're home and we don't have a lot going on. So for those of you who are still watching with me, thank you. Um, because that's where I'm at. I'll watch really long videos on YouTube about um, paint reviews and tutorials and um, all these things because I'm not capable of doing a whole lot right now. So I can sit and read about paints and I can learn about what other people are doing and listen to music and you know eventually when I'm feeling better I'll be making some more new music too. So for this I'm just going to try doing this for now and uh, add some other, I want to switch it up down here. I'm going to add some of this nice blue, but it really does not take much to get a good um, color on the brushes. The blue is very pretty, but um, it, it's a little bit more muted, maybe, and not quite as bright. Um, I kind of like, I was going to fill that in and have it all mixed colors, but I kind of like the swirl effect I got there with those. So, I think what I'm learning from doing this one is that I need to be better at giving myself breaks. And I need to maybe even simplify it even more. I think it was the doing the text that really kind of made it difficult for me there. But yeah, these colors, they pick up really easily and um, really put a lot onto the paper. So um, I'm very pleased, I will say that I'm very pleased with how these paints are coming out and I'm just going to soften that edge a little bit. Um, let's see, what color should I do this section? I'm just looking over at my little cards here to try to decide. I really like this nice bright, it's like a yellowy green I'm not even sure what what color to call that but look at how nice and vivid and vibrant that is let's see how that mixes up here into these purples see what we get and I'll get a little more water down here on the is this what I would normally do um, for selling art. Nope. Oh, and I even see now I got a big old water drip. I bet you guys saw that too. I'm going to take my little napkin and try to just, you know what? That cleaned up very well considering. Hopefully that just happened. But look at that. I got most of that color off around that mountaintop and we are good to go here. So I'm just going to do a nice soft edge around there. And let's see, what color should I do down here? 
Oh, maybe I'll just bring some more. Hmm. Let's try some of this bright, bright, bright kind of a fuchsia almost. I would say maybe it's like a crimson lake or quinacridone magenta, maybe ish. <laughs> I don't know. They are not named. The pigments are not named. Um, it's all just numbers. And I'm guessing number is in their set. Um, that makes a nice mix over there. So like I said, this is very casual. This is not intending to be anything um, that I would consider used for professional use. But look at that. I just put color on a paper. I mixed colors and I probably spent about an hour talking to you guys. I don't even know how long this is. I'll have to uh, put it all together and I'm just going to leave it as it is. Even though it's kind of going to be a long uh, video. I think the ones in the future I'm going to try to keep a lot uh, shorter and um, I'll just kind of jump right into coloring the next one in the book and I will show you this one in the next video how it dried and like I said I'm probably going to end up you know I got the wrong masking tape last time did you see that it peels off paper it peels off your cardboard edging all of that so you know um that is what it is. I just need to get different masking tape for next time. But I'm going to let this dry all the way and on my next uh, recording I will show you how it turned out after it dried and we'll paint the next one. Try to keep it a little bit shorter but we'll also try to talk, I'll try to talk a little bit more about different ways to manage chronic pain and depression and all of these things that can kind of hold us back from our creativity. So I'll kind of lift that up so you can see that. And let's try to find some ways to enjoy life again and to do more of the things that we want to be able to do. And let's say hello to adventure. And I want to thank Prima watercolor coloring book for encouraging me and inspiring me to do this and also Lindsay Weirich, um, the frugal crafter for introducing me to this set and these paints. I love them. I'm totally pleased for doing projects here for myself at home just to get myself painting again. This was a great experience to get to do this sort of thing again and I'm really looking forward to doing the rest of the series. Whether anyone watches it or not, I'm happy to be here and it made my day. Um, well, you tell me about your day and what made it okay. It was this. So, um, thank you for watching if you sat the whole way through. If you did see it and you enjoyed it, just go ahead and push like for me if you would it would sure encourage me to know that there are other people out there who are um, experiencing either similar similar things or found some sort of encouragement through this video and I would like to say one last disclaimer I am NOT a therapist of any kind I am NOT trying to give anyone um, like a medical opinion on anything or how to um, treat any kind of condition. It's just me with my own health issues and concerns trying to find ways to broaden my horizons a little and make my world a little bit bigger and trying to put myself out there a little bit to say, you know what, this is okay. This is me. This is life. This is what it is and let's try to make it a little bit better. So thanks for watching and I hope you all have a really great day.